Lima Croft is RBC Capital Markets Global Head of Commodity Strategy and a CNBC contributor. And Halima, you've got some thoughts on, on why this meeting was delayed and, and maybe what happens behind the scenes. What, what, what went wrong? I mean, at Becky, they have unfinished business from last summer. There are two African OPEC countries, Angola and Nigeria, that are actually seeking larger production baselines for next year. They got a mega deal done in June. UAE was allowed to increase for next year, but they squared the books by reducing the baseline, so basically taking the quotas lower for the underperforming African countries. And two of those countries are saying, look, we want the opportunity to produce more next year. So they have to square the books before they can address the issue of, is there going to be a deeper cut? Are they simply going to extend the unilateral cuts by Saudi Arabia and Russia into next year? So again, there's some uncertainty about when we're going to get this sort of agreement with the African nations and they can move on to the bigger issues at play. Would the most likely scenario be that they are given the right to go ahead and produce what they weren't producing before? or And, and what does that mean overall, that the cuts aren't as deep next year? I mean, I think they're going to find some way to appease, particularly a country like Nigeria. Nigeria has been in OPEC for decades. They do not want to sitting up and falling out with the producer group. So maybe they basically say, we can see what you can do next year. We can reassess this later. So I think they're going to find some type of solution. Angola has always been a trickier member of OPEC. They're a newer member. I've been at multiple meetings where in the middle of the night, the Angolan delegation walks out. And so the question is, can you get Angola across the finish line? But they're not a huge producer. And so there's not as much at stake with a country like Angola. Of course, they want everybody to have a happy you know, group photo, but it's not that material if Angola basically goes its own way. Again, I expect them to get everything together, though, by Thursday. You know, I just keep going back to the idea of how powerful OPEC is or isn't. I yeah. know that's gone back and forth over the last few years, but the United States yeah. is now producing more than it ever has in, in history. Um, and you've got a net, potentially a lack of demand from China right now. It's been weaker demand than had been anticipated. Does that weaken OPEC Plus's hands significantly? I mean, it raises the pressure on OPEC in the sense of if you have a situation where you have non-OPEC growing, it's not just the U.S. It's also been Brazil has had a, you know, a very good year in terms of production growth. Are you essentially having to cut production to give them room to grow? Now, I don't anticipate at this moment that Saudi Arabia is going to throw in the towel and do what they did in 2015, where they essentially said, you know what, let's see where the prices land. We're not going to support the price. But it is, a, it is a tougher call for them right now in terms of how much support do you want to give to this market if it's allowing countries like the United States to grow. Another really important issue, though, Becky, from a policy standpoint from Washington is Iranian exports have grown this year. They have grown significantly. So is the Biden administration going to come under increasing pressure to tighten the Iran sanctions? Now, Amos Huxley was out basically saying that we're going to have tougher enforcement. But what are those Iran numbers going to actually look like? That's a very important wild card, I think, for next year in terms of market balances. Yeah, I mean, it just, every time they say they're going to cut production, it just means somebody else wins more market share, that they're going to keep taking it for them. And I, I would think that that would get really frustrating, particularly to the Saudis, who are probably the ones doing the bulk of all of this. What I mean, there's certainly... Like, I think they certainly want greater burden sharing across all of OPEC. So again, I do think if there's a deeper cut on the table, they're going to be looking for other members, other producer groups to chip in. And again, I think it is going to be interesting to see what happens next year with Iran, because they did see significant growth this year. And the question is, is there going to be an effort to tighten up those sanctions. But you're absolutely right, Becky. I think the question, though, for OPEC is, if you were to go back to a market share war, where would prices land? And I don't think they want to get in a situation where they totally lose control of the market again, like 2015. That's not looked on particularly well amongst OPEC producers, what happened that year. Look, with the Iranian sanctions, though, let's just be clear, the United yeah. States has said, OK, we have these sanctions. But it's basically been acknowledged that they're going to continue to allow that oil to be sold elsewhere because they don't want, the United States politicians don't want oil prices going up either because it really ticks off voters to be paying more at the pump, especially in an election year. Well, Becky, that's a great question, because you are seeing action from the United States Congress to tighten those sanctions up. You had broad bipartisan support for a bill that just passed the House of Representatives that would not only you know, mandate stricter enforcement, 
but also target foreign ports that are taking Iranian cargo. So I do think you're seeing new pressure from Congress to tighten up these sanctions because they're essentially saying, are those Iran exports essentially the bank for groups like Hamas? So I do think there is real pressure from Capitol Hill to potentially force the administration's hand in terms of sanctions enforcement. Again, we don't know the degree of support in the White House for this. Amos Huxley has said they're going to tighten them up. But the question is, are we going to see the full 700,000 off the market? How much do we see in terms of rigorous enforcement from this administration? Because you're right, they don't want higher oil prices. But again, I don't think they want to be accused of allowing Iran a free hand to support groups across the Middle East that have caused so much turmoil.